Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Today we're gonna to be spending some time on the Tessic NSG437, commonly used for 30KV ESD testing. We're gonna begin the video by going over some of the accessories. Then we'll walk through a little about the unit. And then finally, we'll spend some time on the front panel display. As we're going through the video today, we're gonna to be referencing the data sheet and user manual, which I'll put a link for in the description below. The Tessic NSG437 is designed for 30 kV air and contact discharge testing and allows for networks to be easily swapped out. It includes both the air and contact discharge tips as well as a 150 picofarad 330 ohm network designed for IEC 61000-4-2. Let's go ahead now and let's take a look at what's included with the simulator. Here you'll find the Teslic NSG437 in the box that arrives in when you purchase it new. If you are renting the simulator from us, it will likely arrive in a Pelican case. Let's go ahead now and let's walk through what's included with the simulator. Starting on the left, we have our base station. As we work our way right, we have our power supply unit. And then just below that, we have our 150 picofarad, 330 ohm discharge network, which is commonly used for IEC 61000-4-2. Next to that, we have our discharge tip, and then finally, all the way on the right, we have our pistol, and then the remaining discharge tip is on the front of the simulator. You should also find the documentation, including the user manual with the equipment as well. Let's go ahead now and let's take a little closer look at the simulator and base station. All right, here we have our ESD simulator. Let's go ahead, let's start from the front of the simulator and let's work our way back. Starting on the front, we have the discharge tip, which screws into the frame of the pistol. As you can see right now, we have our contact discharge tip inserted on the front of the simulator. As we work our way back, you can see we have the yellow trigger right there, just below the discharge tip. On the bottom of the simulator, we have our connection to the base station, as well as our grounding cable. On the back of the simulator, we have the latch for the discharge networks, and then above that, we have our display. The networks on the Tessic NSG437 and NSG438 can be easily changed out by sliding out the old network and then adding the new one. Let's go ahead now and let's take a look at the display. All right, here's the starting display on the Tessic NSG437. Let's go ahead now and let's take a look and we're gonna spend some time on the counter, pre-programmed test routines and discharge detection. As we're working through the different menus, the trigger button acts as a back button. Let's go ahead now and take a look at the display. In the upper left hand corner, we have the polarity. Next to that, the test voltage, discharge repetition, and below those boxes, we have our counter. All the way on the right, we have the pulse release behavior icon. This is used for determining how the pulses are released based on when the trigger is pressed. Next, below that, we have our discharge type. That's gonna be either air or contact discharge. And finally, just below that, we have our settings which we'll spend some time on when we look at the pre-programmed test routines. Let's go ahead now and let's take a look at the counter. All right, here's the counter menu. At the top, you can see the box is currently showing up. If you click that box, you can select either count up or count down. Let's go ahead now and let's change that to count down. So we have a little pop-up on the right there. We're gonna select down. You can see right now we have five entered. Let's go ahead and switch that to seven. And then hit okay. All right, now each discharge that is applied, it will count down eventually making its way to zero. 
When it does, it will eventually start again at seven pulses. All right, let's go ahead now and let's take a look at the pre-programmed standards. To access those, go ahead and hit settings. And then, like we said, we're interested in standards. There they have both the IEC 61000-4-2 as well as ISO 10605 programmed in. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at ISO 10605. There you can see there's two different options. We have 150 picofarad, 330 ohm, and 2K ohm. And then just below that we have 330 picofarad, 330 ohm, and 2K ohm. Let's go ahead and let's select the bottom option. And then this just allows you to select the uh, options for either 330 ohm or 2K ohm. Let's go ahead and let's select 330. All right, now we're kind of in the final menu here, and you can see the different test levels are shown. We have two, four, six, eight. If we scroll down, we have 15, 20, and then 25. Let's go ahead and let's hit 25. And then you should see that uh, requirement loaded on the display right now. And we have 25 KV showing. Let's go ahead now and let's take a look at the discharge detection, which impacts the simulator's ability to count if a discharge has occurred. To access that menu, go ahead and go back to settings. And then scroll down. And then click threshold. So you can see we have two options there. If normal is selected, the simulator will not count unless a discharge has occurred. When this is turned off, a discharge will be counted regardless if the simulator senses the discharge, relying heavily on the trigger. To go back to the main menu, just hit that trigger. All right, that should complete the video today on the TESEC NSG437. We began the video by going over a little about the unit, then we moved to the included accessories, and then finally we spent some time changing testing criteria from the front panel display. We hope this video has been useful, and please keep us in mind if you ever need to rent or buy the TESEC NSG437.